Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome guys. Today we're going to be talking about the problem of evil. The problem of evil. How do you reconcile? How do you explain the problem of evil and stuff? From the last video I made, I was talking about determinism and foreknowledge. So some people will say, if God knows everything that will happen, and then he decides to create it, then they will say, we experience evil in the world, therefore God is evil. Or that God will punish some people eternally, therefore God is evil. Because he's punishing them, or things like that, or it's causing pain. Okay, so now, me, I'm going to be proving that. No, it doesn't follow. And now you can defend against this objection of the problem of evil. This is one of the possible ways you can defend it. Okay, so let's start. Uh, first of all, just because uh, you think that God is evil, it doesn't mean God doesn't exist. Okay, you can say, therefore, I will not worship the such a God. It doesn't change the fact that God does not exist. That's one fact you should know. Whether you believe that God is evil or not, that's your belief. It doesn't make God evil. Okay. Just because you don't know, it doesn't make God evil. So that, let's start with that. Now, let's go into the real issue. I'm going to, I'm not going to be sweet mouthing the talk for you. We're going to go straight for the jugular. Okay. Now, if God, God is God, He decided to create a world. He decided, and then He created this world. Is God responsible for everything that happens in the world, in that world? Yes, because He created it. Now, we'll get into the intricacies now. This is one of the form of the argument. God creates evil therefore god is evil but me i'm saying no this is not true <laughs> on so many levels the first level is that you left out the good so god created the good and the evil for instance god created the good and the evil and classically tears have elders okay the muslim the majority of this muslim christian uh, anyway they held that god is the creator of both the good and the evil so now you cannot just say god created evil and therefore god is evil that's already wrong then the question is, if God created the good and the evil, some people would then still go further to say, then God is evil. No, at least you have to say God is good and evil. At least you have to say that. Of course, I don't believe that, but that's what you have to say. You cannot just leave the good out <laughs> and affirm the evil. But now you can say, the, 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 there's more the balance between good and evil. That there's more evil than good. If you say that, how do you know that? How do you know that there's not much more, more good in the world than the evil? Maybe evil is so small that it's insignificant in the entire realm of things. That's one explanation, right? You could say that. But some people say, even the smallest amount of evil, is God is culpable and therefore God is evil for that. So if God creates an infinite amount of good, if he creates even just one evil, according to them, therefore God is evil. I'm like, how do you make that judgment? <laughs> That's just wrong. That's false. You could say that God is good and evil, but you cannot say God is evil. So God, in any case whatsoever, from the TS point of view, classical TS, God can never be evil, just plain evil. At least there's a lot of good. <laughs> At least you have to add that. So that's the first argument. But I'll go into showing why this kind of, even the question itself is wrong and it doesn't apply to God. So the second question is, some people will now say, you know what? If God is creating the good and the evil, it seems to be that God is indifferent. So they will say, God is indifferent because how can you be creating good and evil? Therefore God is indifferent. Therefore God is evil. I'm like, bro, it doesn't follow. If God is indifferent, it doesn't follow that God is evil. For instance, if you don't believe in God anymore, the bad things are still happening and good things are happening. So you say nature. Is nature evil? Like, bro, nature is not evil because there's good and there's bad in it. Now, once you bring the concept of nature into the picture, the first thing they will say is that nature, you see, nature doesn't have intention. Nature does not have any intention because it's indifferent. Exactly. So if God, if you claim that God is indifferent, you cannot then make the judgment of evil on God. You have to say, you know what, God is indifferent. Maybe you don't like that. But that's what you have to say. He's indifferent. You can never say God is evil. It's impossible. Just like you don't say nature is evil unless you're shopping hour or something. But anyway, now let's go into the deeper part of the issue. The issue of what is even evil itself. What is evil? What do you consider as, as evil? Uh, let me see if I can find one example to lay this out. Imagine a baby, okay, a baby rolling on his bed while he's sleeping. And then he rolls on top of a... Uh, What's it called? Of an ant. And this ant suffocates and dies. It even suffers like for long ant hours before he eventually dies. Do you call the baby evil? You'll be like, you, you think this is a naive approach, but well, I'll show you it's deeper than that. The baby is not evil, first of all, because he didn't have the intention to harm the ant. So it wasn't his intention to harm the ant. It just happened. So I'm trying to show you the concept of in, uh, indifference. Indifference, you cannot apply, attach in, uh, intention to it. 
that intentionally did us. Now, it's even more than intention. The, it seems to be that what they mean by evil is a malicious, malicious wicked intent. Someone, you know when someone plans something to harm you, like for no good reason. <laughs> we humans, we have this notion of that guy is evil because he didn't need to do that. He planned it. He wanted to punish me for no reason because I'm, I'm innocent and he wants to punish me because of, uh, of my innocence. That person is evil. So we have a concept of malicious, wicked intent and unjust intent. And the, the first thing you notice is that nature, the people that don't believe God, but they believe there's nature. Nature creates the lion and the baby gazelle that is being killed. But they will say nature is not evil because nature does not have intention to harm anybody. Nature is just creating things. I'm like, why do you then anthropomorph anthropomorphize God and thinking that God has intention? Isn't God creating both of them as well? So why do you not call nature evil, but you want to call God evil? You see, they will bring in personal. That God is personal. And some people, some tears believe this, by the way, that God is personal and stuff. But they don't really understand what it means to be personal. What do you mean by God is personal? It's kind of anthropomorphic. And this is where we go back to the discussion of when we talk about God, do we really, are we talking about God univocally or equivocally or analogously even? These things come back again because some people, for instance, they will claim that if God is not in, uh, in space, if God is not in space, then God does not exist. No, if God is not in space, it doesn't follow that he doesn't exist. It just means it transcends space. Some people can't understand that, so they will say God is in space, or time, or many other concepts. Anyway, now, there has to be evil. There has to be an intention, at least, to commit the evil. That intention also has to, you have to, what is the intention? Is it to cause, is it to harm for no reason? You see, if you cannot establish that, that God has an evil intent, you can say God has, God has uh, as long as there's an intention, a good intention, then no matter what the evil is, quote unquote evil, it's not evil anymore. It's just something happening, just like nature, right? So it seems to be that you cannot establish from your own point of view that God's intention for any acts that you see that you think is evil, that that intention is evil. You can establish that. You don't know it, okay? That's where some people that are skeptical, tears, they can say that we don't know God's intention, but we think it's good. So some people, they will not go so far as me, I'm going here. They will say, you know what? God has an intention that is ultimately good, but we don't know it. But you cannot say God has an evil intention. And they are right. You cannot establish it. If you say God has an evil intention, someone can say he has a good intention. Okay. Uh, let me check. So, okay. The video is still going on. I hope you guys are following. So the problem is with the definition of evil. The, there's more to it than just observing pain. It's not pain. Pain is not evil. Just like some, uh, the baby causing pain to the... It's not evil in, in and of itself. There has to be some kind of intention, some disposition to harm someone unjustly. That kind of thing. Okay, so now, where this leads to is that, if you followed me up to this, how do you then explain people being punished for eternity, for instance, in hell? This is where, if you're someone that says God has good intention, to me it's already anthropomorphic, but let's go with it. If you say God has good intention, then does God have good intention for the people that he will punish eternally? Is that good? Does God have good intention punishing them? This is the, will be your objection. And eventually, what, what you will end up doing is this. You will become a universalist. You have to say that. Eventually, God is going to save all of them. And everybody will be in hev uh, heaven. No one will be in hell forever. So you become an, you will be an uh, annihilationist or you will be a uh, uh, universalist. That kind of thing. Yeah, is it that God will uh, annihilate them or God will save everybody in the end? You see, that is if you are still holding on to God having intention, good intention part. But the other way is transcendence. The other way is to say God is transcendent of these things. So you shouldn't call, basically, you shouldn't call, say that God has good intention or bad intention. God just is justified and he creates both. What this does is this. First of all, it's going to destroy your anthropomorphic uh, notion of God. So you might not like that. You might not like the fact that God is not good and evil. He's not good and he's not evil. That God is just transcendent. He's a creator. He creates both. And people don't like this, so they will hold on to this. So if you want to be consistent, you're going to become a universalist. But if you don't want to be a universalist, then you have to affirm transcendence. Where God transcends both good and evil, the concept itself, it doesn't apply to God. Because God creates both, and he 
God in the scriptures affirms it everywhere. I created the bad and the evil. Everything God is the same. I created it. I created it. You cannot then call God evil. And an easy way to just look at it is to just look at nature. I think nature shows it perfectly. No one calls nature evil because they don't think nature is personal, because they don't think nature has intention, a malicious intention. Nature is just creating the world. So why do we then think that? And we, we, we are tears. We don't believe there's anything in nature. God is the creator of everything. So if God is creating everything, just like you think nature is creating everything, you cannot then say God is evil whatsoever. So with the universalist, you can hold on to God being good and everything will be good in the end. Uh, and that way you avoid the problem of evil. Or you can, be, you can affirm transcendence and say God transcends both good and evil itself. You think this is indifference and you might not like that and you might think God is like a friend, a father somewhere. You know, that's anthropomorphic, kind of. So this is the position of the transcendent approach. Many people will not like it, but it doesn't mean it's not true. Okay, that's, like I said in the beginning. Some people don't even like the universalist approach, but that's the consistent way you have to go. If God is punishing some people eternally, meaning it will never stop. How can you say God has good intention for them? Like, your appeal to ignorance is insofar as that you don't know God's intention, but you think it's ultimately good. So, but if someone is getting punished eternally, where is that good part ever? It will never appear. You get so your arguments will kind of crumble. That's why you will become a universalist eventually. But if you don't want to go that route and you understand that God is the creator, and because he's the creator, he will create both the good and the evil. And we are creation and God is God. So look, an example, a good example. Let me check something. Sorry, guys. A good example is, look at the ecosystem. The ecosystem. So you have the wolves. The wolves are, are preying on the antelopes or whatever. The antelope eating the grass. Okay? The grass now, if you see like what's going on here, the wolf has to be there, the antelope has to be there, and the grass has to be there. If you remove one of them, like it happened in Yellowstone, the entire system will crumble and all of them will die. So nature is kind of like, you, 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 know, you believe in nature, but we believe it's God that is creating all of it. Everything is, what, is as exactly as God wants it to be. Now, there's more to it, I can guarantee you. How do we then talk about human relation? How do we then talk about responsibility and all other things? What I've established in this video is this, that God cannot be said to be evil, in wh whatever sense. The, even in the polemical sense, you cannot say God is plainly evil. You have to add the good part. How can you just leave the bad part out, uh, the good part, and then you say it's only evil? At least you have to say good and evil. But that, beyond that, you can just say, since we don't know God's intention, we cannot say it's evil. We have to say that his intention is ultimately good. And if we then affirm eternal punishment, then this will become problematic in the end. You will eventually become a universalist, where everyone will be saved. Or you can still hold on that people will be etern eternally punished, but you have to affirm transcendence. That God is not like a man. God is not is uh, equivocal. Whatever concept you think you know about God, God is transcendent of that because he's the creator. So it will seem indifferent to us. But that's what the creator is. And we are not the creator. Anyway, let me see what you guys think about this. See you guys later. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.